said, a certain, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you, you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditors, are, the creditors is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And, and she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all the neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when, uh, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and, and your sons. But pour it into all the vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door and behind her and her sons and who, uh, her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass. When the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then, then she came and told the man of God. And she said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt and Okay, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Now it happened that one day that Elisha went to, to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as she passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. There's another woman now, right, please, right? Shunammite woman. And she said to her husband, Look, look, no, now I know that this is the holy man of God who passes by regularly. He passes regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us he, uh, he can turn in there in other words he can sleep there and it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there then he said to Gehaz his servant call this Shunammite woman when he had called her she stood before him and said to him, okay, and said to, and, and said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? You know, what can I do for you? This man acts as if he's God. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the, or, or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, in other words, I dwell among all people. Don't worry, I'm connected to all the high places, right? So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then she said, remember she stood where? In the doorway. Then she said, then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord. Men of God, do not lie to your maid servant. Right? But the, woman, but the woman conceived and bore a son when 
the appointed time had come, of which Elisha told it. And then the child grew. Now it happened one day that she went out, uh, went out to, to his father, to, uh, to the what? To the reapers, yes, to the reapers, right. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he said on her knees till noon and then died. The child died. The boy died. Right? And she went up and laid out on the bed. She, she took the baby to the bed, right, of the prophet, uh, of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. So when the man of God comes, there will be a corpse of a boy on the bed. How romantic is that? Then she said to her, to her husband, okay, then she said to her husband, and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the men of God and come back. The child is dead on, bed, on the bed of a man of God. Then she's going to call the man of God. Are you hearing me? Right. Now, because I don't want some of you to sleep. Let me tell you the rest of the story. The man of God was called and then the boy was raised from the dead and the taken back to the mother, all right? Like that. Father, we thank you for your word and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, because it ends at 37, so um, I don't want you to sleep standing. Okay? Maybe seated. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this to you. I don't have much time. Um... I want you to read this at home by yourself. It's a very interesting story. It's two women. It's two women that the Bible talks about. The first woman is a woman in debt. Somebody say woman in debt. The second woman is a woman in money. Somebody say woman in money. So now here we see the, contra the con co contrast, uh, whatever con con it is. Now, we see here the contrast here that these two women are experiencing a totally opposite experience in life. The other one says to the prophet, my husband is dead, is dead, and my husband has left me with all the debts. And now the creditors are coming, the, the creditor is coming to take my boys, my two boys, to make them slaves. Are you hearing this? To make them what? Slaves. And it's and, 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 and is crying to the men of God. The one that has money is not crying. The one that has money has a discerning spirit. The one that has money has learned to descend. No wonder she is moneyed. She can even descend opportunities. The one that has money seems to be a woman who has a high level of discernment, can be able to read things and conclude and then take a decision. So what is happening, we see the other one is full of debt. The other one is full of money. But here is the amazing thing. The one that is full of money, the one that is full of debt, has children, the one that is full of money does not have. Can you see life? She's comfortable, she's got cars, she's got chariots, she's got servants. The woman is loaded, is loaded, the woman is loaded. But now the woman does not have anybody to inherit her wealth. When she dies. <laughs> can, you, can you see? The, 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 can you see here? Now I don't know which one is better. I don't, which one would you choose? Huh? 
Would you choose to be in debt and you have creditors and phone calls and from every company, from everywhere, and you get the threatening calls and you get the legal, uh, uh, you, you, the, the letters of demand? Or you choose to be wealthy and have money and have husband and have wife and uh, have money but have no child? Which one is better? Somebody says it's money. Is money better than children? So what would you choose? Come on, class. What would you choose? Would you rather live in poverty with your children or live in plenty, in money, in power without them? What would you choose? You know what? I can, listen, I can hear somebody now is saying that, Pastor, uh, you have no idea. I'm frustrated with them now. Uh, you know, I'm worried. <laughs> I don't know how will they, will, will they go to university. I don't know how will they, I, I'm frustrated now. I think money is better. I don't know. But somebody may say, yeah, I'm sorted. I have money. But you have no idea how it feels to, be, to have nobody to share your money with. So can you see that life is tricky? Eh? All right. Now, the wonderful news is this. Is that God, through the man of God, was able to sort out both cases. Can you see the good news? The good news is that the anointing can be able to sort out these two. So in other words, I'm telling you now that you don't have to choose. Just choose all. So your answer should be what? All of the above. Huh? Isn't that right? All of what? All of the above. Because now I've seen in the Bible that the one who had money and had no children then had a child. Then the one who had debts with children ended up having money. It tells you the power of the anointing. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. Are you getting what I'm trying to say to you? In other words, I don't have to choose. I can tell God that I want it all. Because I know that it is God's plan that I should have it all. It is God's plan that I should have a prosperous family and the good children and also have money to support them, to feed them, to take them to university and also even help other children that are not mine. It is the will of God for me to live that kind of life. So we are living in a time where people love to choose. Some other people, they say, give me Jesus. Then silver and gold. I want both. I want Jesus and I want money. Both. Because Jesus without money is also, it's terrible. People will not see the glory of God in you. When you preach to the people, they'll look at your shoes and say, I don't want Jesus. They'll look at your house and say, I don't want Jesus. They will move to Islam than Jesus because there's nothing that is attracting them to you. Gold will attract people, not God. So gold is important for people. Gold is important for us to evangelize. Gold is important for us to extend the gospel to the parts of the world. Gold is important for us to be a good testimony because there's no good testimony in poverty. The Bible says poverty is, uh, poor people are even hated by their neighbors, even by their friends. So then we learn that poverty does not glorify God. Poverty does not provide dignity. So we learn that even when you are not saved, even saved people, they respect you. 
You have no idea how many saved people who respect Bill Gates, who does not know God, who does not even want God. You wonder how many believers who have Jesus, who honor and celebrate him. You wonder how many believers when he came to college and everywhere, how many they ran to see the man who does not know God, but who has money. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm trying to make an example. Are you hearing me? If they had money, they would have had that Bill Gates. They say, oh, he's here. Oh, that's okay. Uh, if you see him, say hi. That's all. <laughs> but people, they ran like flies as if they were seeing God. Because God and gold are related. Let me say it again. I'm saying God and what? Ladies and gentlemen, we have to go for God and gold. Amen. But God first and gold after. Not gold, then God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all that you need shall be added unto you. But you seek God before gold. So you see that. Now look at this. Then the Bible is, 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 is straightforward. Then, 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 then this, which one should we start? Should we start with the first woman? The woman in debt, probably. Okay. We'll start with the woman in debt. Which, which woman should we start with? Okay, let's start with the woman in debt, right? The woman in debt goes and cries to the man of God. And remember, this kind of a man of God is a man of God who knows that he has been called by Almighty. Number two, who knows that he has been anointed to sort the problems of people is a man who is confident. Look at the second woman. We're still going to go there. Look at the second woman. The, 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 the man of God said, he said to, to Gehazi, his seven, and said, go to the woman and ask what should we do? For, what, what can I do for her? Sometimes we men who are called by God, who are confident in the God that has called them, who have a covenant with God. Sometimes they speak as if they are God. Elisha did not say, what can God do for you? But today, because we try to be humble, because there is Facebook that will reject us, and there are people that will speak many things, we water the authority as men of God that God has given to us. What can I do for you? Yes, I'm not working alone. I'm a man of God. I'm from God. I'm anointed by God. I'm given anointing by God. I understand who I am. I understand what I can do. I understand the covenant between me and God. So what can I do for you? So if I come and say that to you, don't say that I have pride because you don't know in my closet what did I speak to God and what did he say to me. I don't need to explain it to you. Just answer my question. What can I do for you? You see, that's one of the reasons they crucified Christ because they said he speaks like God but he's a man. Because he will come to Bartimaeus, to the blind man and say, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a tool and you have the anointing, you will say, what can I do for you? Because you trust what God has put on your life. You trust the spirit of God that operates over your life. You say, what can I do for you? Touch your neighbor and say, anointing is authority. Come on again. Say, anointing is authority. Every man who is anointed has authority. Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He says, me to deliver those who are oppressed. To deliver. Yes. Are you hearing me, somebody? A man with authority. God will say, Moses, go to Pharaoh and deliver my people. Say to Pharaoh, let my people go. What authority? I've 
seen a burning, a burning bush. What authority? He has given me the stick. What authority? He has given me the power. Pharaoh, let my people. Somebody say anointing. Somebody say anointing. Anointing is authority. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Anointing is what? Anointing is authority. <laughs> Did you hear what I said to you? Uh, some, some of you, let me tell you something that you don't know. Let me tell you something that you don't know. Anointing submits, listen. Anointing submits to the person that is anointed. Because anointing is a gift of God and the sign from God to the person he has called. A man who's anointed can choose who to pray for and who not to pray for. I'm not sure you understand what I'm trying to say to you. Did you hear what I said to you? Can choose, right? Did you hear that? He can choose who to bless and who not to bless without God getting in between. Jacob was blessed. He was an anointed man of God. Jacob had an encounter with God, had a covenant with God, had an anointing of prosperity. Jacob. He chose to bless Judah, to bless uh, 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 Ephraim, to bless all these other, you know, to bless all, all the, the, the tribes of Israel. And he chose not to bless Reuben. Are you kidding me? So, 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 so. Ah, uh, oh God. I don't know how can I. You see, for example, look at this. The Bible says Naaman had leprosy. He was a big man and a big commander. And they came to Elijah. He came to Elijah and Elijah did not even want to come to the house. He just told the man, the big man who was who's supposed to be big, supposed to be president, supposed to be big. He, he did not even come out of his house and, and Naaman was offended. He was even begged by a lady, a small lady to say that would you just do what the man of God says? What if you do it and then your leprosy goes? You know, and the man of God did not even come out of the house. He spoke by authority. He said, tell him, tell him. The man of God did not tell him. The word of, man of God told his servant and said, tell him. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say to you? And some people, when we operate through authority with the anointing, they say we have pride. But you see it all over in the Bible that the men of God were not common. They were not common. And they did not operate as common people. Because when you are anointed, you must protect yourself. When, are you hearing what I'm trying to say to you? Because the anointing is not common. It should not be treated as common. The anointing should be protected. It does not matter what you say. I have to protect the anointing. I have to protect the power. I have to protect the authority. So he said, he said, tell him to go and dip himself seven times in river Jordan. The anointing gives instructions. You cannot benefit with the anointing, if you come with the preconceived ideas. There are some people who don't understand how the anointing works. Some other people, they say, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. And I, I, listen, listen, I don't want to pray for you. I just want to release a word to you to say, it is well. Go, it is well. Then you are waiting for the hand to be laid upon you. And then the miracle does not happen. And then you blame me because you don't understand how the anointing works. Listen, the anointing works the way it chooses to work, not the way you who wants a miracle. Uh, you don't get, are you getting me? You don't get to choose. But people today, they want to choose. I went there, I thought he was going to lay hands on me. You see? 
And people love hands. They love laying of hands. The greatest miracles that have ever happened in the Bible, there's no hand involved. Jesus did not lay hands on Lazarus. He did not say, open the tomb, remove the stone, and got into the grave. You are Lazarus, you are dead. You want Jesus to come into your grave. Varche beer med yo. So the anointing works through the instruction. Through the instruction. You want to be helped, the anointing will tell you what to do. The anointing will make a mud and smear the mud if you want to see and tell you not lay hands and not even say see and say go and wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Go and wash yourself. You know, you, you can't claim and say please heal me like you healed Bartimaeus. You laid hands on him and say see. No, it, you're not going to choose how should it happen. God does not bless people the same way. God does not, does not treat everybody the same way. He treats you according to your need and according to your destiny. And you cannot tell God how to provide for you. You can come with a problem. And cry. I say, yeah, yeah. And I say, go. Just like that. Go. Then you get offended. Do you know that Jesus Christ said to other people when they had leprosy? He said, go. Where? Go show yourself to the priest. Go. He never healed everybody with leprosy the same way. Yes. Sami gave instruction take the offering. Go and show yourself to the, to the priest. And the Bible says that as they went, they got healed as they obeyed the instruction. Many believers today, they even die early. Because they don't know what it means to obey the instruction. I remember there was one of the leaders in this house had a problem. The children were crying. They were seeing things. Children were seeing things. Children were crying and crying. I gave an instruction. I said, go, buy this, buy this, go, do one, two, three in your home. But that was all. After that, one day did that to this date. Children are well. But somebody would say, he just says to me, he's not even coming to my house to pray for me. The, the issue, these people like to control the anointed. The problem we have today, people want to control the anointed. They want, they want to control. They have preconceived ideas on how. So if you know how things should be done, why don't you do it to yourself? Why do you come to me? Do it to yourself because you know how to do it. Yeah. This is what we learn now. That the anointing, the anointing can help you overcome your debts. The prophet said, what do you have in your house? That's in gentlemen. You have to understand this. The prophet, the other prophet met a woman, woman of Zarephath, do you remember? She did not have just oil, but she had also flour. But now the instruction was, do this, do this, and then the oil multiplied and flour multiplied, right? But where there's flour, there's a different instruction. They ate until the day of drought was gone. But here, this one is, is instructed to go sell. Now, if she saw the miracle with the other one, with oil and flour, would have said, why me alone? I have to walk up and down and work. But that one, because that one did not work. It was just prepare for me first. That's all. 
Prepare for me first. And that's why the miracle took place. So you get it. Now look at this, please. Look at this, please. The man of God then said, the last verse of that story, if you can get to that verse. The man of God said, now go take the oil, sell it and pay the debts. And pay your debts. What is the message? The anointing will help you to pay your debts. The oil will help you to pay your debts. Let me share a miracle that happened in this church. Some of you will remember if you have been here for a while. We had one of the sons who, when, our, when we're doing pledges, remember, you know, don't worry now, we're doing just small things, say 1,000 rand, but that time we said 10,000 rand. We called for people for 10,000 rand, and a number of people came, 10,000 rand each, right? And then this, this guy was among those people who gave 10,000 rand. Then when he gave 10,000 rand, like on Sunday, in that week received a message from the bank where he is owing because he's got a bond with that bank. Bond maybe for two, two years or three years or something like that, you know, but it was troubling him. But the bank came back thanking him for fully paying. You remember, who remember that miracle? You remember that? Okay, right. So I need to have a, a, a witness, you know, you don't say I'm a lying pastor. Say, oh, they create stories. Once they, pre oh, I know them, you know. So he testified in this church, right? So he had his bond canceled just by giving 10,000 rand. How much is a house? Not, the house was not in township. So how much is the house? For giving 10 rand. And 10 rand is not bribing God because he did not know what was going to happen. So you get it. So what happened now, how was it, how was it cancelled? It was through the anointing. But how was it cancelled? It was through instruction. And what was the instruction? 10,000 rand. You, you get it. Just look at that miracle. We serve a living God. We serve, we serve a living God. Now, you have to understand this. Then the Bible says, then the boy died. By next year, this time, you're going to embrace a baby. That was a prophetic word. The woman believed the prophetic word. But what, what, what is amazing to me is this. When the man of God called the woman, and the Bible says, then the woman stood at the door. Somebody say stood at the door. Can you believe this is a, her own house? Huh? Can you believe that she is in charge in this house? But when she's called, she just knows to boom, coming in. Stand at the door. It's a respect and honor of the anointing. Even when anointing is accommodated in your own territory, in your own house, where you have authority, but you still recognize it. And there are places and territories and spaces that you cannot cross. Did you see how they spoke? The man of God did not directly speak to the woman. Read the Bible there. And he said, call her. Did you see that? Who called the woman? The man of God. But did he go to call the woman? No. Called her. And the servant, when he had called her, she stood at the door. Right? Then let's continue the next verse. Then he said, about this time next year, when she stood at a certain place at the door. Because the anointing has not said, come in. Yes, Lord. I'm not sure if you see the issue of protocol. Yeah. There are those who are so used to the anointing, they don't even wait for come in. Hmm. 
when they are cold already, they are next to the bed. <laughs> you see? Are you hearing me? The anointing works with reverence and respect. Even when you know the person for years. Big Lord. They say familiarity breeds contempt. That is why sometimes, I don't say all the time, in churches, people who come for the first time receive miracles more than the people who have been there for a long time. Because people who have been there for a long time, they finish the sentence while you are starting it. Yeah. I say, oh, you see, now I know what he's going to say. Oh, yeah, here he comes. Oh. <laughs> you see that? So the enmity to the effectiveness of the anointing towards my life, it's when I am used to my father. I am now familiar. I am now used to. Now, by that, I have lowered him to me, to an ordinary person. And then I complain. My things are not moving. I, I complain. I have no breakthrough. And I complain. I complain about everything. But, 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 but I don't check how am I relating to the called. How am I relating to the man that has been called over my life. How am I relating. Because the way I relate will determine how I receive. You see, their parents, maybe let, let me blame them today, the parents of the children, I think 400 children or 40, that died with Elisha, they, 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 they played with the prophet. They say, Baldi, Baldi, you remember that one? They were laughing at him because of his boldness, right? Right? The bold, bald, baldness, boldness, baldness, boldness, you know? So they laughed at him, right? The Bible says, then he called bears. They come, strangled the kids, and killed the children. Now you have to understand one thing. These kids were never taught who is a man of God. I don't blame kids. I blame the parents. Because the children of Israel who are Jews, children of Israel who are Jews, they reverence any man called man of God. So I wonder what these children were taught. All of a sudden the children died and they were not supposed to die. Remember, they died and the Bible never said anything and God never said anything and God never blamed the prophet. There's nothing, no blame, blame game, but children died. This is not to scale. One thing that I don't want in my life to happen is for the anointing that was called set apart to cover me, to come against me. Did you hear what I said to you? Because Elisha, Elisha is called for the nation, but now we see the anointing working against the, the people that, you see, were supposed to benefit. Instead of benefiting, they receive instruction. Instead of receiving life, they receive death. Now they are bearing kids that should have been protected, that should have grown to become good citizens or whatever. So you get it. Now, so, The woman, let's leave alone the other details. Let's come to the last woman. 
Is it the last woman we come to? Okay. The woman now is paying the debts and paying everything in order for her and the children to live. <laughs> you see, when things get tough in my life, when I have prayed enough, and there's no change, I leave God, I go to my Father. Now I'm talking about me. I tell him that I've prayed. This say from from now this this is it's yours. I'm not, are you kidding me? Why do I say that? Because he's got more authority than I, more anointing than I, more grace than I, more experience than I. You see, a number of things that have happened to her, some of them did not come easy. But a number of them, he has played a role for those breakthroughs to come to pass. You see, There's nothing wonderful like being covered. There are things that will not happen as a result of the covering you are under. When I was in ICU, when the doctor said to my wife, he is about to go, prepare yourself. My wife called my father. My father prayed and the machines changed the message. The responsibilities of the fathers is to bless, is to empower is to remove the stumbling blocks to your destiny. But you still have to work to get to your destiny. They don't take you to your destiny. They remove the stumbling blocks. But you still have to push your way through. But now, at least it's pushable if there's English like that. But if there's a stumbling block, that the father will remove the stumbling block. He'll remove the stumbling block and take his position and see you working and monitor you going to your destiny. So are you hearing me? So now you need to know, that's what you need to know. Let me share this testimony then I close. You need to know, you need to know, you need to know that we are called also to pull people out of their financial constraints. And you need to know that where your enemy, where the enemy attacks you the most is the area where God wants to give more grace. I'm going to close with this. Are you hearing me? God, I don't feel like preaching now. I feel like teaching. If you are called, Sarah, to be the mother of nations, then barrenness will be your attack. To block the very same ability that God prophesied about. 
wish I could talk to you. If you are called to have money, then you will be attacked from time to time. No matter how well and professional you manage your finances. I wish I could talk to you. Oh, I need to speak this slowly. The area of your grace you see by the weapons that the enemy is bringing to you. Oh, wish I could, okay, 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 okay. If you are called to healing, you'll be the one that gets sick the most. Okay, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, God has given me the, the, the healing anointing. You have no idea. You, you, you just have no idea, you, you know, how many times I, I went to the hospital. You know, I, I told you I've been ICU two times, right? Are you hearing me? So, 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 and somebody would say, okay, oh, he prays for others and they get it. No, 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 you get challenged in that area until you conquer that area, until you have victory in that area. And when you have victory in that area, are you what I'm trying to say to you? Are you what I'm trying to say to you? That the area where you are called the most is the area where you are challenged the most. Are you, are you what I'm trying to say to you? You cannot say that God has called me to minister to prostitutes. No, God has to take you to prostitution to deliver you from prostitution in order for you to go back to prostitutes and to minister to them. I wish I could talk to you. God has to take you to Egypt and grow you in Egypt and grow you in Egypt and then take you and take you and anoint you and then say go back to Egypt and say let my people go. Where God has called you is it's where you're gonna suffer the most. I wish I could talk to you. Your ministry, your ministry, your ministry <laughs> is also the place where we are challenged the most. You can't preach about holiness Amen. if you don't know how it is to be tempted. Your message will be water. God allows us to go through in places where we will be strong. You are a father of many nations, no children to show. But you are going to be a father. But there's nothing in you that is pointing to that direction. There's no evidence in you that is pointing to that generation. God will say, I've called your child to be one, two, three. Then your child becomes a troubling child and you don't understand what is happening. It's a journey. Just pray. What God has said will become. Are you kidding me? God said he's going to be a pastor. He's going to be a prophet. Now he's a drunkard. Now he's... I wish I could talk to you. When things are shaking, it does not mean that the word of God is going to fail. When things are going in opposite direction, it does not mean that God, that God is not going to work. The Bible says all works together for the good, for them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. If you're going to have positions, possessions and material things, Satan is going to challenge you. You're going to buy a house and it's repossessed. You buy a car, it is in the car accident. God, I wish I could talk to you. I'm here to say to you this morning, do not be discouraged. God is not a liar. What he has promised you, he shall bring it to pass. No matter what is happening, God he shall bring it to pass. If God has called you to be a mega church pastor, your church will struggle to grow. But at the end, what God has said will I can feel like preaching now. What God has said will come will come to pass touch your neighbor and say this will come to pass this will come to pass 
that's why my business is struggling it will come to pass God said I'm a businessman this will come to pass God said that I'm traveling the world this will come to pass that's why I am struggling with visa because God said I will travel the world that's why I'm struggling with the passport because God said I will travel when I see the opposition it is an assurance to me that God has called me So this woman was struggling with the issue of oil, small oil. She did not know that God planned for her to have an oil company that will not only provide oil for her, but for customers as well. That God was thinking customers. While she was thinking two kids, God was thinking customers. Like many of you, you are only thinking your family. But God is thinking beyond that. He wants to take you beyond that. You are thinking one car. God is thinking something else. He's thinking the fleet of cars. You just have no idea what God is thinking and where God is taking you. You know, this morning I just feel destiny that God is taking some people to greater destiny. That's why you are challenged the way you are challenged. That's why you are crying the way you are crying. That's why we are complaining the way you are complaining. That's why you experience things that other people cannot be able to, you cannot explain it, but it's happening to you. I'm here to say, hold on because God is up to something touch your neighbor and say hold on say God is up to something hold on God is up to something that's why you got married to a man that was not responsible a man that was a man of God but that could not feed his enemy a man that had a lot of debts God was setting you up so that when he dies he brings a prophet when he brings a prophet then your oil company will start then your oil company will start and help the people you thought you were suffering but there are so many people that were suffering that needed oil and nobody could sell them oil but you are the one that God has chosen that you should sell oil to them in the name of Jesus she did not know that she had a solution for many people are you hearing me where you are suffering it's where you are called just take it by force and say God So the second woman, what she did, she said, I perceive, the other translation say that, I perceive that this is a man of God. She is not like the first woman. woman of Zarephath who said after the baby has been raised from the dead who said now I know that you are a man of God this one knows the man of God by revelation not by manifestation of miracles these are two types of people in the church some they will believe when they see the manifestation things happening then they will believe but there are those who will know by revelation by discernment you remember that Elijah did not even do a miracle 
Now look at this, please. <clears throat> Between these two women is amazing that when the Shunammite woman child died, boy died, as compared to the woman of Zarephath, but boy that died, they did not react the same because they don't have the same revelation. The woman that we read last week, which is the woman of Zarephath, she complained and she said, have you come here to kill my child? She was angry and she was desperate and she was, you know, you know, she was emotional and she blamed the man of God. Remember that? But look at this one. This one, <clears throat> the confidence with this one is at another level. The baby died at the absence of the prophet. The other woman, the baby died in the presence of the prophet. Which one should have been more hopeful? The one that had a baby died in the presence while the, the prophet was at home. But that one had no revelation. So is the one that complained. But the one where the prophet was away, not in the house, is the one where we see faith. Then you read the chapter, the prophet came, and the prophet says, is everything well? The woman says, oh, men of God, every, all is well. What do you mean by that? The other one is complaining. This one says, all is well. But you guess what? She has refused to bury the baby. The boy is in the bed of the prophet. And she's saying all is well. Why, why all is well? Because we are here now. I should not worry. I'm not sure you, you, you get it. And if you check and compare, if you check and compare, the prayers of the men of God, Elijah the prophet, with the woman of Zarephath, is not the same as the prayer of Elijah with the woman, with the Shumanite, uh, Shumanite woman. Are you hearing me? Then, what happened with this woman is that she created an atmosphere through giving. She created an atmosphere. She built a room for the anointing. Built a room for the anointing in her own house and the location of the room shows the respect that she had she had let's build an upper you get it you see so they built a room which was at the upper level than where they stayed when where they lived you get it and often about when the baby died, she went right straight to the place of her offering. You may not believe this. This is what I believe I share. Let me share it personally so that I will not be criticized too much. I have confidence in my offerings. And because of that confidence, because I'm holding God at his word, you get it? So I believe, this is me, that I have a lot of seeds in the spiritual ground that will speak for me in the time of need. When you are giving, you are actually building altars that will create memory in the presence of God in the time of need.
This is where God will bless your children. Even when, God forbid, they should not be drunkards, but even when they are drunkards, they will always experience perpetual blessings, not because of them, but because of what you have done for the Lord. When I grew up, I knew people, some of them were living a pro problematic life. Some of them were drunk every day. They're always drunk, but they say this one is a teacher. This one is a what, what, you know, sometimes educated guys, but having a problem with alcohol. But can I tell you something? Some of them were chased out of a job, but they will not even stay a week and get another one. And some people were worried that we are sober and we are, <laughs> but this one does not lack a job. No, they are not operating on their blessing. It's a generational blessing. God is remembering the prayers of the mothers and fathers who did something for the kingdom. And God is keeping their children. And eventually, they will come to the Lord. We had a, we had a discussion this morning with, with Minister Alfred. I think we, we discussed the issue of the baptism. Uh, the question was, when we baptize, should the children be baptized? And, and from what age? <clears throat> My answer was easy. I said the age. I said the age is the age of parents' comfortability. As long as the parent is comfortable, that's okay. Yeah. But we'll teach you the other day because how can you grow with kids? You are in Christ. And you are saying to your kids, when you are old, that is when you are going to confess Christ. By yourself. By your will. But God has given kids to you. Um, I'll, I'll teach you something. There's never a time where Jacob had to confess Jehovah. There's one person who starts a covenant in the family and others are born into it. The old covenant and the new covenant, they are both covenants. They have similarities. And Jesus says, allow the children to come and don't forbid them, don't stop them. So he wants children. Are you hearing that? Like for example, I used to, my, my, my firstborn son, I used to, you know, speak with him. At, sometimes when he was young, he would come and tell me that at work, at, at, when the, he was at school, Jesus came, they talked. Jesus came at school. Children have more chance to see Jesus than you. Jesus, children are more likely to see angels than you. It's easy for Christ to penetrate through children than you. You have a lot to think about. You have a lot of baggage. Have you ever seen when, when you call children and say, uh, anybody wants to receive Jesus? They say, me, 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 me. If you come to the elderly people, yeah, they look at you like this. That's why some will say, let's raise up our hands. Let's all close our eyes because, you see, so you understand that? Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. The principle, the spiritual principle works everywhere. Even in the issue of ancestral worship. If you have a father as a child who is an idol worshiper or who is an ancestral, ancestral worship, worshiper, you don't get to choose. You don't get to choose. There's no time where, okay, uh, <clears throat> we want to speak to the ancestors. We just want, we are five years. We just want to know if you are, are you willing to accept? No, 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 there's nothing. The principle says, once a patriarch has started a journey of a covenant, did you know that when God was speaking to Abraham, 
He said, you and your kids. God was speaking to his kids. That time. He was speaking to the whole nation in Abraham. In fact, the Bible says, when Abraham was giving tithe, the Bible says, Levi in the loins of Abraham was giving tithe too. God did not see only Abraham. He saw the whole nation. Let me leave you with the last scripture. It's not the proper one. I think I've started it wrongly. The jailer and other people in the, in the New Testament, the Bible says, when, when, she, when, she, when he, he understood that uh, the, 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 the prisoners did not run away, Paul, Paul said, and sellers, do not kill yourself. We are here, all of them. Then they gave him Christ, and he confessed Christ. Then the Bible says, re remember, he was at work, a jailer, at work. Then he received Christ. But the Bible says when they came to his house, the Bible says he was baptized, he and his whole house. You don't get it. This is a covenant. This is, a, 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 this is not a way, oh guys, uh, I was at work. Hey, now I received Christ. I want to know if you want to. There's nothing like that. He's the head of the house. You get it. Have you ever heard the Bible says that if a wife is saved and choose to keep the husband who is not saved, the Bible says the hand of God is on the husband. The Bible says the husband is sanctified. Sanctified by who? By God. Because of who? Once you start a covenant, it enters. God will be on that man, even on his deathbed, because of you. Well, I wish I could talk to you. Oh, hey, I feel the power. Let's leave it now. <laughs>